First, we have breaking news from Burns, where the standoff at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge continues. The leader of the militia, Ammon Bundy, met with the FBI this morning. Jennifer Dowling is there now with the latest on this situation. Jennifer? Good afternoon, Ken. Yes, Ammon Bundy showed up at FBI headquarters at the airport with a small group of supporters and his security team. Then he took them here to this blockade at the sheriff's office to talk to David Ward. All of this, presumably, to try to negotiate. Uh -huh. It was supposed to just be a phone thing, but I'm uh -huh. like, I was just kind of feeling and feeling like, like we, we uh, should just uh -huh. go down there, you okay. know. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, so we made. Arrangements and Ryan was feeling kind Did of they crazy. know you were coming? No, no. Uh -huh. uh, no, so then we. Uh, How do you know he was even at, down at the airport? He wasn't down Oh, he wasn't, yeah, no. okay. Uh, but, uh, but I figured, I, I didn't know. I kind of thought maybe he wasn't, you know, uh -huh. actually, to be honest with you, but I didn't. I wanted to go, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, here you hear these little things and all these little different I think he was there. So if the FBI is yeah. making contact with you, I didn't actually. I, I don't know why, but I kind of thought maybe he wasn't going to be there. Uh -huh. maybe it was I thought that said. was odd for the, like, you know, to have him call a meeting or have a meeting and then make you stand at the barricade. But actually, he didn't call you to come in. No. Okay. All right. I wanted to go down there and okay. I wanted to show him that we were normal people and uh -huh. that we, you know, weren't what the media has been telling him. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure they get well, a lot know, of Well, you know, there's a there's a there's a different thing going on here between. <laughs> between what you're doing, and yeah. there are a lot of people up in town and sometimes up at the top for the press conference, and honestly, they have been intimidating. They have been intimidating. Mm -hmm. well, I'll give you an example. So, three days ago, Pete was all riled up about um, the environmentalists were there, and they were kind of having their shout, he was shouting them down. Hey, and Patricia. And then um, the day before, he had gone down to yeah, the, how are you doing? the FBI post, you know, he's, follow me down there, <laughs> I'm going to tell them the thing. And he said the Constitution over the lads. Right, and so he, um, you know, he... That's no, That's I, I, I'm just, I'm just, no, you're asking me when there's been intimidation. I'm telling you. Right. Okay. So he was getting all kind of whipped up there, right? And then there were some journalists who came down to cover it, including Coin. And we went there too, but we did not roll on him because, frankly, I don't think Pete Santilli is the story. Okay. All right. And I, I have no, I have no, and I would talk him this too. I have no reason to put it in the to be be a peaceful, <laughs> Why would I ever do that? Right? I'm just promoting him. Right. Okay. So. so anyway, but Coin was there and they were rolling. That was their call to roll on it. But they don't have any obligation to broadcast that. So anyway, the next day we're all up there for the press conference. <laughs> and Pete starts following well, the reporter around with a bullhorn. Pro bomb. Hey, Pete. Oh, huh. Yeah, I need to go in. I need to go in. Okay, we're going to go in. And go in. Yeah, I got to do my thing, too. All right, do you mind coming down to the RV park? Sidearms are following her around, too. And, you know, I could, I felt that was intimidating practices. Well, were, but were they with us? Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's two different groups at play here. Okay, there's the people down here, and then there's your supporters that are heavily armed, and you cannot deny he that. Out meeting. Out he told the FBI spokespeople there he wants open negotiations with the FBI, and he wants media present during those negotiations. Now, the FBI did not agree to that. Now, the FBI did not agree to that, but secondly, during this very short meeting, he questioned the FBI's jurisdiction once again, as he's been saying in the past. He says it should be the sheriff who is in charge, not the FBI. So when he was basically rebuked at the FBI as far as getting some satisfaction there, he went to the sheriff's office for answers. You can see that in this video here. He was told Sheriff David Ward, however, was unavailable. And the spokespeople at the sheriff's office said that the refuge was a federal issue. So essentially nothing happened at these two meetings except that Ammon got to again speak with officials at the FBI headquarters as well as officials at the sheriff's office. Now, we did speak to Ammon, asking him if there were going to be any updates, and we did do an interview with him. We'll have more of that coming up for you on 4, 5, and 6 on Coin 6 News. Back to you, Ken. All right, thank you.
things I, I wanted to mention. I'm so excited about the, the community meeting that was held last night. I wasn't there. I heard it was tremendous. It's uh, the community of safety that's putting together. If things were going to be pursued, then, then they would be the ones that were at the head of that table. It is very simple for me to be here this evening. It only takes one unstable person to show up. And buffer this situation and get it drawn down until we can get some politicians behind this, some constitutional judges, some constitutional Guys, sheriffs. we're live streaming right now, if you guys don't mind. ABC News, will you mind talking for a second while you're here? I'm not afraid of anything. What was done was wrong. We invaded a community without permission. You have a commander out here who's not a Harney County resident. We're here to hand this over to the citizens, not the militia. Video safety, they're putting together, getting ready to uh, take over operations. Remember, we are here to lead, but we're here to pass the baton safely to the citizens of Harney County. The standoff in Oregon Wildlife Refuge is now in its seventh day. It's a holdout that includes people from all over the country. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now we are on the ground in Oregon outside of the Mount here Wildlife Refuge. Now just days ago, armed militiamen came in with a idea, with a, a voice that they wanted to be heard. They wanted to show the U.S. government, the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, that taking our land is not going to happen anymore. And these patriots showed up and said, enough is enough. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to what's going on. Now, yesterday in Oregon, the entire trending thing on Twitter was Oregon under attack. The mainstream media has blown this completely out of proportion and tried to compare it as to why are people naming uh, the Black Lives Matter people who uh, rioted in Ferguson Terrace, but they're not calling these men here the terrorists. Well, as you can see, we're in the middle of nowhere in Oregon. It took us hours to get here on snow-covered roads. And as you can see behind me, there are men who have occupied that guard tower. They have the road blocked off into the entrance and there's a media set up over here where people are doing their reports about what is going on. Nope. Talk Station Leader Ammon Bunny is with us from the Mal here National Wildlife Refuge. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us what you're trying to do. Um, well, we have a situation here where uh, our federal government has come down upon the people. Uh, they've been doing it for some time now, and there's been some tremendous abuses. Um, they've uh, used the courts to uh, prosecute and to basically take the land and resources away from the people. Why are you armed? We are serious about being here. We're serious about defending our rights and we are serious about uh, getting some things straightened out. Do you anticipate that this could lead to violence? Um, only if the government uh, wants to take it there. I saw an interview with one of your members who was heading there today who said he is prepared to die for this cause. Do you feel the same? Um, I feel that absolutely but probably not in the way that most people will take it. Um, we, I, I am a family man. I have six children. I have a business. I'm a I'm a, actually I own a truck shop with about 25 employees. I have no in, desire to go out and, and to lose my life. I want to live free. I want to be able to prosper. And I know that I need the land and resources to do that. What went into the planning of this? Had you been planning this a long time? Is this a spur of the moment move? The Hammond family says you're not speaking for them. So how did this come about? Every one of those ranches, the ranchers, have had to leave leave their land, leave their heritage and their hard work in order to make this refuge. And that's really what this is about. The people of this county are being abused and now they're being prosecuted because they're not willing to sell uh, to the federal government. And uh, it's just one of those things that, that, uh, that just cannot continue. The abuses and the, and the, the damages will be uh, too, uh, it's too critical to allow it to, co to continue. You, who is the enemy here? Well, I don't really want to say there's any, any enemy. The federal government really is acting in the way that they were set up to act. The states have failed to protect the counties and the counties have failed to protect the people. And so 
Now you have a situation where the people have to stand on their own to protect and defend their own rights. So really our system of our federalist system has failed and we need the states to stand up and say, hey, you're not going to do this here. And we need the counties to stand up and say, you're not going to do this here so that the people can go about and peacefully live and, and benefit from the land and the resources and prosper and, and uh, regain their wealth across the country. Would you define this as an armed militia who's prepared to stay indefinitely? Absolutely not. This is concerned American citizens that are willing to stand for their rights. Absolutely not. This is concerned American citizens that are willing to stand for their rights. All right. Ammon Bundy, thank you so much. Thank you. Taking place right now. Let's listen in. I would in. like to just give some housekeeping items. And that is, uh, many of you have asked us for what is our name. And uh, other than just citizens that care and feel like it's time that we make a stand uh, to protect our human rights. Uh, we didn't really know what to say, but uh, we felt that we'd give ourselves a name, at least so that we, we could be reported that way and uh, we could be more organized in that effort. And that would be Citizens for Constitutional Freedom. Um, our purpose, as we have shown, is to restore and defend the Constitution that uh, each person in this country can be protected by it and uh, that prosperity can continue. Um, we love our country. We love the people in it. We know that uh, we are struggling to be able to know what to do as a nation and and in many times, in many ways, we are we are dividing, and uh, we hope that we can restore those things, and uh, that we can unite as a people in uh, protecting individuals. That we will not forget about how important each person is. Now, what we know is Ammon Bundy, the son of Clive and Bundy, part of the historical standoff against the BLM, a uh, little over a year ago is one of the men who is in charge of leading this protest. Now, they do say that they will remain peaceful, but if necessary, if the government does come in and shoots first, they will respond. So this is a very tense standoff, even though we are in the middle of nowhere. This is something to pay attention to because is it going to turn out the exact same way as last time when people showed up in mass numbers riding around with American flags and push away the BLM? Or this time, is the government going to use dirtier tactics? Now, yesterday we had information that there were drones flying over this area right now and that there were also snipers in positions surrounding this area watching. Now, we've gotten reports that the FBI is on their way out here. Now, they could be off in far distances from here. There's a lot of areas with hills and vantage points where it'd be easy to spot and look to see if anything were to happen. If the BLM does come up here and approach, then the FBI can sit there from the backside. And in other events like this... Mike, a group of men and women, mostly from out of town, have taken over a wildlife refuge headquarters, which is owned by the federal government. They feel that though places like this, this is a wildlife Mike, a refuge that the federal government took over. They bought land uh, and made this a refuge for people, but not for ranchers, for farmers, uh, for those who are trying to make a living off the land. This was saved for animals and for people to come out and see it. And they're saying, look, this land once belonged to ranchers. The federal government came in and bought that or took some of that land away, uh, according to them. And they do not think that the federal government had the right to do that. And so they've decided to take it over uh, until it is given back to the local people. Mike, we had a conversation uh, with the person who is leading this effort, uh, saying that they're simply here because they say that the, the federal government has overstepped its bounds. Stay here until we have secured the land and the resources back to the people of Harney County and, 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 and where they can get back to ranching, get back to logging, get back to using these lands without feeling fear and intimidation. Between and that's Burns and the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Now, earlier today, I had the opportunity to stand with Ammon Bundy as he spoke to the national media. And in this, he addressed his concerns, what he was upset about and why he was here in the first place. 
He's concerned about the way the, the Hammond case has been handled. He wants the media to look into the Hammond case further in hopes that maybe they'll open that case up again and look at some more evidence that they believe they have would help clear the Hammonds, thus getting them out of another jail sentence. Now, as far as a police presence, so far there is none. There are no local police, no federal police, no state police, uh, no police whatsoever in this area. I do need to remind you that we are about 30 miles from anywhere. Uh, the town Burns is about 30 miles uh, down the road here. Uh, they have taken over a small area and they said they have do done any damage to it. They are not hurting anyone and they won't hurt anyone, but they do warn that if the federal government decide to try and storm the building, for example, then their reaction may be different. We do know that they are armed. The reaction from the federal government, as we understand it, at least the locals are saying, that there will be a command center, a police command center set up at some point today. We have not seen that yet. Mike? Breaking tonight, an armed standoff in the Oregon wilderness shows no signs of ending anytime soon. It started with a group of ranchers unhappy that two of their neighbors were sentenced to lengthy federal prison stints for starting fires on their own land. Dwight and Stephen Hammond got five year sentences after some of those fires spread to federal land. Their supporters first protested, and then a group broke off and decided to take control of a national wildlife refuge in Oregon, trying to make a point that the feds here are really just trying to stick it to the ranchers. Among them, the sons of rancher Clive and Bundy, who had his own memorable and controversial dispute with the feds back in 2014. In moments, we will be joined by one of the Bundy sons, Ammon Bundy. But we begin with Trace Gallagher reporting from our West Coast newsroom. Trace. Megan, 73-year-old Dwight Hammond and his 46-year-old son Steve arrived at the federal prison near Los Angeles late today. After some brief goodbyes, the two men walked through the gates to begin serving their five-year prison terms. The Hammonds Ranch interlocks with federal property, so for years, the family and Bureau of Land Management have worked together to manage the vast area where the Hammonds cattle graze. In the early 2000s, the Hammonds claimed the feds gave them permission to start fires intended to protect those cattle. BLM says there was no permission, and three years ago, Dwight and Steve Hammond were convicted of arson. They served their original sentences, three months for the older Hammond, a year for the younger. But because they were prosecuted under a federal anti-terrorism law that mandates at least five years, the government took the rare step of appealing the shorter sentences. Now, because the government is playing hardball with the Hammonds, armed protesters have taken over several buildings at a wildlife refuge near Burn. Oregon. The man leading the takeover, and Bundy, claims he's fighting against government oppression. But the local sheriff thinks Bundy wants to overthrow the local and federal government. Ammon Bundy says he's with 150 armed protesters. Those on scene say the number is about 15. But the FBI is clearly trying to avoid another Ruby Ridge or Waco, Texas. And so far, there has been zero law enforcement presence at the refuge. An imminent confrontation is unlikely. But remember, the government retreated from a standoff last year with the Bundys over grazing rights in Nevada. And experts say not acting this time could embolden more anti-government groups. Megan. Trace, thank you. Joining me now, Ammon Bundy, one of the leaders of this standoff. The group is now calling itself Citizens for Constitutional Freedom. Ammon, thank you very much for being here tonight. So how is what you are doing not lawlessness? Well, um, I think that we have to go to the supreme law of the land to answer that question. And that is... Uh, that the federal government does not have authority to come down into the states and to control its land and resources. That is for the people to do. And that is clearly stated in Article 1817 of the Constitution. But you know the, the argument on the other side, which is these ranchers whom you support, but you're not directly involved, had their day in court. And they were found guilty. And it went all the way up to the US Supreme Court, which denied their appeal. Isn't that the way it's supposed to work in our country when it comes to the rule of law? Yeah, well, let me ask you, and you, I'm sure you know the answer, but who was the plaintiff? Keep going. 
No, I'm asking, who, who was the plaintiff against the Hammonds? I'm, I'm waiting for you to make your point. Generally, I don't answer the questions on, on my show. I ask them. Oh. Well, the, I mean, it, it was asked intended to be answered, but the plaintiff is the federal government. And yet, they're also, the, the prosecutors are the federal government. And those who want their land is the federal government. And those agencies that have been oppressing the people here are the federal government. There is no proper redress because our, our, the design of this structure of this, this government is not intended for the federal government to come down against individuals in a state on these matters. And, and that is what this is all about. What, your brother, uh, Ryan, apparently told the Oregonian, uh, I, uh, Ian, I think it's Colgren of the Oregonian, that, that you are willing to kill and be killed if necessary here. Do you agree with that? Um, that statement was taken way, way out of context. Uh, I've already talked to my brother about that. And uh, so, um, uh, no, I wouldn't agree with it because it wasn't his statement. So you disavow that? You, you, you will not let this come to violence? Well, I have a family. Um, I have six children, a beautiful wife. I have a wonderful home. I have a business, uh, several employees. Um, I'm not here to die. I'm here to defend my freedoms and my liberties. And will I? Yes. But um, it's not going to come to that. Uh, there's good things that are going to come from this. And things are going to get straightened out. And um, that's what we're here, and we're confident that that is going to happen. And, uh, and it will be a benefit for uh, many, many people across this nation. And I can uh, pass a lot of what I've enjoyed in this life onto my children. Well, Mr. Bundry, thank you for being with us tonight with your perspective. Thank you. Looking through what this mainstream media is over here and what they're pushing out, saying that this is a you know a terrorist takeover, when actuality it's not. It's a peaceful stance against the government that is completely out of control, which is overstepping its boundaries. It's overstepping the Constitution. It clearly doesn't care about that whatsoever. It's hurting real American families out there that are trying to work hard and provide and work the land and reap the uh, the benefits of labor. So that's what's going on. You've got just crazy people though, that are out there that are just spewing this stuff. And this is what's really going on, a peaceful stance. I don't see anything. There's not going to be any cars flipped today. There's not going to be any vandalism. There's not going to be anyone shot. You know, hopefully Obama doesn't take this, send out federal agents, and then really spark something up and then use that and go, hey, they shot first. We didn't do it. Now we really need to crack down on gun control. Absolutely. We can see that it's a peaceful situation there, as you pointed out. You know, we've had the situations you covered multiple times, what was going on in Ferguson. You had peaceful protesters who were saying, we, need, we have a broken system here. We need some reforms. We need to fix this. And yet there were inside agent provocateurs who would go out and start violence, start burning buildings in that neighborhood. Uh, but I guess it's all right for me to smile, so <laughs> uh, relax a little bit. Uh, and again, I... I'm grateful that you are here. Uh, I realize the, the great role the media has had in, in uh, defending individual rights and to exposing things that should not be going on and, and uh, in holding government and other entities accountable. And so thank you for being here. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your courtesy and your respect. And, uh, grateful that you're here. Um, I'm going to be pretty short today. And I'm going to turn the time over to the wife to come here. But I um, wanted to uh, inform you that there are a lot of good things that are happening. That we have been very active in, uh, in forwarding our plan and in assisting the people of Harney County in claiming and using their rights. Um, we have, uh, we want to thank the, the, the many people from the community that have come through the doors that have 
given us uh, food and supplies and thank uh, those ranchers that have, have brought us uh, meat and uh, for a particular rancher that bought a very, very good pot of food that was very needed on a, on a late night when we were very hungry. Um, we also appreciate um, the advice that the community members have given us about how to reach out and how to share our message so that uh, other community members will know that we're not about uh, fear, we're not about force, we're not about intimidation, and that that is the reason why we came here, because, uh, because of the force and the intimidation that we have seen in their county, and because of the need that we have seen to assist them in becoming free from that force and intimidation. And so we appreciate that. We, like them, are part of a community. Um, we have children, we have wives that we have left at home. That we miss very much. Uh, and we are a great, and we understand that you also have a community. We have children that we watch play football that we take to dance. We have neighbors that we help when they're uh, hurt and we bring food to them when they, when they need it. Uh, and we understand what it is to be part of the community and know that there is no place for intimidation and fear in a community, that it should not be uh, allowed. And that if, if government is being that timid, uh, fear and intimidation, that it needs to be checked and balanced. And if other government entities will not do that, then it becomes the responsibility and duty of the people to remove that intimidation and fear uh, so that the members of the community can begin uh, living and, and living in, in freedom. Hey, Ammon, have you spoken to the sheriff? Ammon, have you spoken to the sheriff? Here's, here's the plan in, in broad terms. In broad terms is that those transactions which took place, which transferred these assets, these real estates, these resources to the federal government, at that point, those transactions or where we need to focus on because that is the illegal transaction. Remember, the federal government can only purchase lands by how? Look in the Constitution, by the consent of your state legislature. Unless there is a bill of sale from the state legislature transferring that land to the federal government, it is an illegal transaction. So that is the point that we are beginning to look at through the records. And that point, that is the plan. If we go to the records, we find that transaction, that's where we begin to unwind it. The first, the first, the first, the first people that we need to, we will protect is the, the ranchers, the farmers that are currently on their land, that they are not to be intimidated anymore, to pushed off. All these ranchers that have come and visited with me, that have talked with me, with all of us here, the one common thing, the one thing in common is this. They express fear that the federal government will do to them what has been done to the Hammond family. So that is the first thing that we'll do is to protect any rancher, any farmer from having happened to them what has happened to the Hammond family so that they may speak out and feel free that they may express their feelings, their opinions without intimidation. That's, that's, that's the first point. The second point is when, when that transaction is found, we'll begin to reestablish the ownership to that family who lost it through various means. And we will see that we are being successful and being prepared to leave when the hundred ranchers and the farms are being restored to these families. They're moving their cattle back onto the ranches. The, the logger is back into the hill and they're safe in the use of their resources. When Harney County residents are safe in the use of their resources, 
when Oregon, the state of Oregon, is safe from the threat and intimidation of a central power, you know, I, I need to get home. I, I got cows that are scattered and lost, and I'll be looking forward to that. But that is, that is the, the, the broad plan, and we're working on the specifics with, with teams and anything, groups. Did you hear anything in the press conference from uh, Emmon Bundy as to uh, what the end goal was of this takeover? Well, what he wanted, what his demand was, was for the people who have basically put the Hammonds in a situation where they have to go back into jail again. They're supposed to turn themselves in today. They want them to have another hearing and go back through the evidence, actually break down and bring in people like the Bundys, bring in other people they want to be able to have uh, an opportunity to present evidence from the Hammonds, the family that they have, to really show that what's happening uh, is completely unlawful. And that's what they're saying. That's what their end game is. That's what they want. And they said they'll stand out here and they'll stay out here as long as possible. And uh, add to the fact that people said armed militia took this place over. I've been out here for a couple hours. Um, I've seen a lot of the militiamen. I haven't seen any guns yet whatsoever. But it it still is a heated standoff because... Are you aware of uh, why they school shut the schools down? Well, we... I was told by a local firefighter, and I confirmed that the, some of the schools have been commandeered. Yeah, well, I'm definitely the high school. I can see it. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Yeah, staging. There's a staging area. Uh, the, the community's pissed off about it because um, moms have to stay home. The one common thing, the one thing in common is this. They express fear that the federal government will be oh. successful and being prepared to is back into the heel and from the threat and intimidation of a central power. You know, I, I need to get home. I, I got cows that are scattered and lost and I'll be looking forward to that. But that is that off? is the, the, the broad plan and we're working on the specifics with, with teams. How much groups. federal land sir do you want to run? Off, it, down no, it, it, it's warm, we're grateful. Now, if they cut it off, that would be such a crying shame. All the pipes will freeze and, you know, it'd be destructive. No need for that, but uh, I see is the best disinfectant. We want to be open and transparent. Yes. Oh, okay, listen to what okay. The okay. Let, let's take a look down. at this. Let's take a look. What is the state's responsibility? The state's responsibility is to intercede between a overreaching federal government, between that federal power and its citizens themselves, to protect their neighbors in their farms, in their homes. Should the sheriff resign because he has been incompetant? I, I'm not worried about that. That's, 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 that's How do you respond to him telling you to go well, If I was a kid, I would be thinking, this is great. I never did enjoy school too much kid. I did not know who's cowardly to come out here. I, I don't. You didn't say it. You say the community are with you. Themselves. If the community are with you, as you say, where are they? Why are they not here with you in the They're in down number? there. How there's, many? How many? There, there are several ranches down there. And every night they come here, but they don't stay because they're... Why, why don't you have them come speak they, they, to us? They stay at their homes. It's close. I wouldn't stay here if I had a rancher. Sir, have they been told to Infowars.com. Now, we just arrived in Oregon. We come here to investigate the reports of armed militiamen overthrowing a federal government building here at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, right outside of Burns, Oregon. Now, there have been reports they have taken this building. They're using it as a place to protest against the U.S. government, who time and time again have overstepped their boundaries, taking up people's lands. It's not just happening in Nevada, it's not just happening in Oregon, it's happening back home where I live in Texas as well. This is a huge issue, it's a huge problem. So this is why we decided to come out here. We wanna find out if it's really as bad at this federal building as they're making it out to be, or is our government using this as another way to push gun control. As you can see, we're down here in the actual compound area, the uh, federal building where the uh, militia have taken over and they're staying against the tyrannical government. As you can see, they're not destroying anything. They're actually taking care of the land and preparing it and making sure it looks good. They're not out here uh, destroying property. They're not out here messing with vehicles. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, government vehicles that are sitting here. They've been left untouched, unharmed, and uh, the place actually looks pretty good. So that is what's going on inside of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge here in Oregon.
guys out here putting in some hard work and doing what they can. And what they say they're trying to do is give this land back to the people. You don't see any gunfire. You don't see any buildings burning down. It's not a peaceful protest like they said was in Ferguson. It's not like a peaceful protest that happened in Baltimore. This is actually, by the book, peaceful. There's nothing going on, nothing crazy, no shots fired, no people screaming, no one running for their lives inside of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Sir, have they been told to stay home? Are they cowering in fear in Burns, uh, per the residents that I've spoken to? They've been told to stay at home because they're, they should be fearful. Is no, that no, th this is open. I'm not, I'm not aware of any of those types of allegations, in, or, or I am aware of none of those types of actions here to be peaceful. I am not militia. I've never been part of militia. I don't intend to be part of militia. I am just a rancher. But, but uh, so we are here to be peaceful, to be non-threatening, to we're citizens. This is America, you guys. This is America. This is freedom. We're neighbors. How do you accomplish your plan? Harney County. Turned are we talking about tens of thousands, millions of acres? Let, 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 let's take land over one third of the land mass of the United States. Now, I talked about this yesterday, didn't I? Okay, and it's gone clear to the Supreme Court that over this one third of land mass that they have complete exclusive legislative power whatsoever. That is not a republic, okay? So these federal, these public lands, and they are public lands, they are not federal public lands. They are Harney County public lands. They are Oregon public lands. They belong to the people of the states and the citizens of the state. They can manage it much better. The federal government set fire to a controlled burn, got out of control, burned thousands upon thousands of prime timber who went to prison there, who gave up their liberty there. Nobody did. The Hammond family burned 140 acres of land, of brush, that is nothing. It is to unwind all these transactions. Oh, the been here. They, we have been talking with them every night here. That are what is terrorism? What is the terror to control them? Has it not been the Hammond family? How, and who is the citizens? Thank you very much. You Thank you, sir. Can you say and spell your name? Can we get your name? Lavoy Finnica. How do you spell that? L-A, capital V-O-Y, F-I-N-I-C-U-M. Mr. Finnicum, do you believe that... Uh, these um, unconstitutional land yeah. transactions that you talked about, how far back historically would you go? Right. Your First Amendment protects, uh, your Second Amendment protects your First Amendment. You've got to have your Second well, Amendment I did not protect feel protected that. by those men <laughs> when they were standing behind me. I didn't feel one bit protected by yes, them. You, I felt well, threatened well, let by me them. Clarify this. And so, I, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I'm not yes, a scaredy cat. But let me clarify this. I mean, I wasn't, make, I wasn't afraid enough to leave or say, oh, you know, I feel in danger. I'm not going to do this assignment. Right. But I'm just saying, those were intimidation tactics. But let me, let me clarify yeah. this. Because... So, the, the and I don't think the peace is dangerous started. at all. I think peace is fine. No, but he loses the no, human no, no, perspective sometimes. Okay, okay I got, I'm making a point here, okay? <laughs> so, um, what, the conversation started as why you guys would be projecting us or portraying mm -hmm. us as intimidating people, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you just gave me a story and you very clearly said that they are not with us, okay? Mm -hmm. So my question is again, why are you portraying us mm -hmm. as intimidating people? Mm -hmm. I mean, because just everybody that well, goes into they, your, everybody that goes into they, your facility. You may not feel their part of you, but they feel part of you. Yeah, that's all right. So, I mean, so, so, so we're know. responsible for everything that now everybody in the United States that carries a gun is? No, absolutely Come on. not. Really? Absolutely not. But I'm just saying I mean, they're, okay. they're so claiming to be part of you and they're standing but that, up there. But there is no, out at the but there's no different power. from that. There's no different from that. There's, as, there's all, there's what? Like, 20 cameras up there. The summer called Jade Helm 15. Greg and Dennis, today's arraignment was brief, but well attended by both of the FBI agents fired with shots and then tried to cover it up. But so what that would be no different for me saying that I've written that now. So if someone so acted inappropriately, which Pete Santilli did, he's a media. Right. But to he's say not a journalist. 
He's a, he is not a journalist. Well, he's a mouthpiece. He's, he's like a commentator. Okay. Well, either way, <laughs> saying to somebody, <laughs> one of the other, one of the other. Yeah. I can't get a word out here. Oh, wait. That was cute. I'm gonna go upstairs. And go get ready for dinner. Anyway, it's no different than saying if one of the camera crew or you know other yeah. did something right. that now it's all of you guys. So correct. Uh, and, and you think I don't get that all the time? But, but you you guys, media, you yeah, media. Yeah, you guys are reporting on us, <laughs> and and big, frankly, you guys want us to get murdered. No, I yes, don't. Yes, the I heck do you don't. Okay, I don't. The heck you don't. <laughs> so you're saying you guys again? Well, that's what you did. You're saying you guys. You're saying everybody that well, now has a camel and a and gun. You're, and you're saying all, everybody in the media wants to see you. But I'm not reporting. Like you. But I'm not reporting on you. Right. I'm not the one. Uh, demonizing you so that the justification of the FBI to come down here and kill us. That's the reality. You guys are being dishonest and, and we fire your organization business just as bad as the rest of us. And what is going to happen is you're reporting that we are doing something that we're not that is somehow dangerous to the American people. And you're justifying the federal, the FBI building up forces uh, so that they can come out and kill us. You know what the FBI does? What they do is they isolate and demonize. And then once they get isolated and demonized enough, then they have justification from the American people to go and murder. That's what they do, and you're helping them. And we've been fighting it so that they don't come down here and murder. And that's why I went over there. Because of what you guys are doing as a media. Because if you're portraying the true story, which you see how our doors non-stop from people, ranchers that have been abused, non-stop. And this has been going on for now three weeks, right? Non-stop. We are here for the people. And you guys, and I know I'm generalizing, but you guys are lying. Take a break. You don't have to be a prick every day of your life, you know. Lies, get your men ready. Well, according to reports, the Bundy militia in Oregon is preparing for a federal raid. A suspected FBI raid on the Mallier Wildlife Reserve building in Oregon has armed protesters preparing for a potential standoff, according to Mikhail Thalen and Joe Biggs, who is currently on the ground at the occupation's epicenter. Now, several sources speaking with Ammon Bundy have stated that the FBI are preparing to descend on the remote location. Quote, Ammon Bundy says that they do have credible intel from three different sources that they believe the FBI will be coming down on them, according to Joe Biggs. A federal source speaking with The Guardian early on Tuesday said that the government's first plan of action would be an attempt to flush out the group by shutting off the building's power, forcing protesters to face eastern Oregon's freezing temperatures. Quote, it's in the middle of nowhere and it's flat-ass cold up there, the source said. Quote, after they shut off power, they'll kill the phone service, then they'll block all the roads that those guys, uh, so that all those guys have a long, lonely winter to think about what they've done. End quote. The Monday said militia members have reportedly begun taking defensive positions in preparation for the suspected raid, uh, blockading a nearby road, as you can see in this picture here, uh, blockading the road with um, government vehicles. So <clears throat> this is uh, continuing to develop and we shall, we'll have more updates, live updates from the ground uh, later. But uh, right now it looks like they're bracing for some sort of a, a federal raid. Uh, I, did do, I was looking online earlier and saw some, uh, some research from Biggs that's, that showed um, that the FBI is currently staging at a, a nearby airport. So they're probably using the hangars and large open space there to stage their assault on the compound. And uh, hopefully, hopefully this will end, you know, without any bloodshed. I mean, that's that's the that's the optimal outcome we can hope for here. Um, there have been some whispers, as I've seen some quotes, as I'm following different people on Twitter, where people have said, uh, and, and according to quotes from Bundy, that if the people on the ground, the people in the town, don't want them there, then they will leave. Well, that they shut down for a week. As you can see, they do have some news agencies here. W K or K G W, Channel 
channel six over there. As you can see, the lights are on and in the school. They are in the school. Probably setting up a terrorist war crime plan. I agree with that. <laughs> against the Patriots. <clears throat> Good job, Ben. This building here. That's the sheriff department. And as you can see down there, they have the road blocked off there. They got the road blocked off all the way around the school. They are in the school right now making criminal terrorist war plans against the patriots of the United States of America. There it is, sheriffs inside the school. Ladies and gentlemen, there's sheriffs inside the school. Okay, that's confirmation right there. Nice job. Good job, Ben. Sheriff guarding the doors. There's all their vehicles over here. The other vehicle I showed you looked like a command. Uh, I don't know what they would call them trucks, but that's what that is. Right there is the sheriff department. They're in the sheriff's department too. They are, looks like they are, yes, they are in the sheriff department too. Now we're not secretly recording, we're actually as a member of the press. There it is, sheriff's department. We don't have any feds identified in that building, but they've commandeered this building. Now they shut down the schools for a week and they basically told the people of this community to cower in fear. Okay. Well, this hotel is full, so, I mean, and people from out of town, so we don't, there's no way of knowing. Um, how's it going? Who? Captain Joe. Oh, how you doing? Hey, Joe Shelley. Hey. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good. 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 Hey. How's it going, man? Yeah, how's it going? Right? Right? I think yeah. we're in uh, We're in the border. That's right. Yeah. All right. How's it going? Hey, good, good. How you doing? You guys, uh, hey, uh, my name's Pete Santilli. I hope you don't mind. We're live streaming. Oh, I'm sorry. And you, do you guys have uh, a camera you normally carry with you? Uh, we don't have it with us right now. You you don't have it with you right now? No, no. You don't have anything that you can, you can record with? Um, just my phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have your phone ready because... The, the hotel uh, is filled. We just got word from Ann and Bundy because we heard from Fox News yeah. uh, that they, they intend to make a move, I think, tonight. Oh, you're okay. So it could be, you know, somebody here in the hotel. We, we anticipate that it might be in, in the hotel because I guess police were in here just a little bit ago. Oh. So I just confirmed this and I played the audio and I played it over the stream. Yeah. So just, you know, be prepared. I just wanted you to be forewarned. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now I'm standing outside of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge where at 4 p.m. today, uh, Pacific Standard Time, I was supposed to have a sit-down interview with Ammon Bundy. Uh, I drove my vehicle down this road over here, and we actually went into the facility. And when we got down there, he said he had some big intel that he was sorry. He didn't want to have to, but he had to cancel our interview that he owes me one. So uh, hats off. At least we're going to at least get that chance to uh, sit down and uh, hopefully get an interview with him at some point in time. But what he did have to say was pretty explosive. We just had a press conference over here to my left, and Amon Bundy says that they do have credible intel from three different sources that they believe that the FBI will be coming down on them. Now, one of the gentlemen is sitting down over there right now on top of a sleeping bag holding his rifle, said that he heard that the uh, police department had issued a warrant for his arrest and that he was going to stand his ground and sit down over there for the next few days and not go inside, but sit out there. He said he'd rather spend his last days out in nature than to die inside of a building. Now, Ammon Bundy seemed very concerned that the FBI was going to come after them tonight at some point in time, possibly. You could tell in his voice, you could tell that people here were uh, concerned about what might happen. Now, earlier today, the uh, Fed said that they were going to possibly be cutting off the power. I'm not sure if the power has been cut off yet. I don't see anything down there. And they said they would shut off cell phone reception and also set up blockades to my uh, left and right to stop supplies from coming in to help further their stand uh, in here at the uh, facility. 
So what we're trying to find out is what's going to happen next. Well, Ammon Bundy and his brother just jumped in their vehicle, and they're driving over to the Hammonds residence right now to do what they said they felt like they needed to do to warn the Hammonds about the FBI's actions and how they know they have uh, some intel that they heard, too, that they said they saw BLM uh, officers walking around the Hammond residence back during one of the uh, arson claims they said that they saw them with flame torches going around setting the fire and trying to flush them out so they could take more land. And Ammon Bunny said that that's when the Hammonds set that backfire to stop them to save their property. So this is where we're at now. There's a standoff in Oregon. We're standing outside in the freezing cold. Ammon Bundy has just gone down there to talk to the Hammonds, and the, re the rest of the militiamen are here, ready, waiting. They said they will not be the first to fire, but if the federal agents do come in here, they will do what they have to do to survive. I'm Joe Biggs reporting from Oregon for Infowars.com. Yeah, Good deal. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to keep, uh, keep the stream going so that we can give you updates. I'm going to try to get on the, uh, on the telephone and figure out, based on uh, people that are... Um, uh, that are on the ground, um, find out what is going on on the ground there. But I'm going to make some telephone calls here. Let me see if I can get you in there. Okay. I'm going to call Brandon. I'm going to call Brandon, and uh, I need to relay to him. Uh, he's with um, Idaho 3 Percenters. So, uh, he may or may know uh, about this latest update, but I want to confirm with him because we're hearing uh, directly from Ammon Bundy. So, this is a newsworthy item uh, and certainly worth relaying to Brandon, who's been helping coordinate uh, communication with the, um, with the judge, I guess, uh, and, the, and the sheriff. But Hey, I got an update from uh, from Ammon. Hold on one second. Okay, Mo's calling. Hey, you there? I want you to hear it, okay? You want to hear it? H have you? Uh, well, I'm I'm just kind of curious. Uh, have you gotten in touch with the sheriff at all? Has it? Uh, has anyone? Okay. Am I on that screen, Ben? Yes, sir. Okay, good deal. All right, good. Okay, listen, uh, tell me if you can hear this. Do you hear it? Lincoln, 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 
Lincoln High School. Tell, that tell Joe to make sure that, um, that they have I credentials. Told him, I told the deputies. We, I don't think we'll be able to move it up, move around without credentials. But, uh, you know, I, I, I had already uh, gone out there you know, when I first arrived. We're going to head out. And I, I said he should be expecting, you know, my arrival. But, okay, go. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. That's the information I have. Uh, you need to go. Uh, are you okay? Okay, Ann, just do me a favor. Uh, I'm going to keep this phone ready, uh, either text or communicate right now, okay? All right. All right. All right, bye. All right, guys, this is Joe Biggs with M4s. I'm giving you guys the best lighting I can do. Uh, we're out here in the dark in the middle of nowhere. Ammon Bundy just came out and said that they uh, have some of the same intel that we've heard, too, that the feds are uh, amassing. They are uh, in burns right now, and they do plan on... Um, delivering five warrants for uh, people here. Uh, Ammon Bundy stated that he believes that there will be a siege on this uh, federal compound and uh, you could tell that they were uh, definitely taking this intel that they said they've got from three different sources that are in burns. Seriously, uh, Ammon Bundy uh, left and then came back minutes later and said that they will now be taking a defensive position. So much different from earlier where they were going to hold back they said that they will be taking defensive positions and holding this ground because many ranchers have shown their support for these guys and said that they are basically uh, a beacon of light for these guys and they will stand here for ranchers in America who are being bullied and bossed around by the BLM. And they said if they die here, then so be it. But they will be willing to defend themselves and stand their ground. And that is a word from Ammon Bundy here at the Malheur National Wildlife Center in uh, right outside of Burns, Oregon. So I'll try to keep you guys updated as much as possible. So I'm just relaying this as I'm getting it. Uh, initial call came from Fox News. I'm live streaming right now. Uh, another thing is that, uh, well, as you know, the hotel here is booked. I guess all the hotels are booked, and law enforcement is all over the city, and uh, I'm sure they're taking, you know, uh, precautionary measures. Um, there's, uh, you know, news reporters here, but, uh, you know, including myself. Uh, but in addition to that, there's other people in the hotel. So I don't, I don't know what law enforcement was doing in the parking lot. They were actually taking pictures of all the vehicles in this hotel as well. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's going on, but we're just reporting as we're observing. Um, not, not, to, not to compromise, you know, anyone's safety. I'm just reporting the facts as we're, as we're seeing them. Uh, and I'm relaying them to you because obviously you're out of, you're out of town. But, um, um, yeah, that's what we're doing. So I, I don't know if, um, you know, if they have anybody in the hotel that they're concerned about um, uh, that, uh, that might, you know, that might respond to you know movement into the refuge. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not certain. So, okay. Now, now listen. Let me let me ask you something. We're we're going to you know we want to report on this obviously, but we need to we need to carefully consider our movement uh, around town because law law enforcement is going to be doing their thing. Uh, but we need to proceed obviously as credentialed members of the media, uh, as as all other media are. I'm sure media is both. Um, so, so yeah, so we're going to, we got um, uh, Vice uh, and HBO uh, uh, with us as well. We ha actually had a meeting with them. Uh, they just arrived for it, so they're, get, they're getting their gear. Um, okay? Oh, right now the weather's, uh, we got inclement weather. It's snow. I just uh, showed it on the stream. I got, I got the live stream running if uh, you want to take a look at it, as a matter of fact. Live stream uh, YouTube, okay? YouTube, uh, YouTube Live, all right? I sure will, absolutely. Okay, all right, bye-bye. Yeah, we need, uh, I would say, you know, I put a call out for, you know, 100,000 men and women. At this point in time, I need to do uh, the most responsible thing, and we need to report things. I mean, however many people have responded as far as community members, uh, that have been educating themselves on the issues here. 
Uh, also getting to know uh, the guys that are in that refuge. We're obviously very, very concerned about uh, that crew that's inside the, uh, the refuge. Um, we're very, very concerned about them. I'll, I'll be very honest with you. This is uh, an emotional thing for me, uh, no doubt about it. So uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to hide my emotions. I'm very, very concerned because, you know, I, you know, I would say even the local community members have uh, have come to uh, to get to know these guys. And they know that there's there's no harm whatsoever uh, to the local society, uh, to law enforcement. Uh, but, you know, like we said, uh, the, the feds, uh, if, if, if they have control over this thing, they will do what they're going to do. And we can, of course, pray for their pray for their safety. Okay? Amen. Uh, Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. We are in Burns, Oregon. We arrived here Sunday evening to film and to find out what is going on with the Bundy standoff at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Today we woke up to reports um, that came out from The Guardian saying that federal agencies, including the FBI, said that they would be shutting off the power to the wildlife refuge where Bundy and militia are standing their ground against what they say are a tyrannical government running rampant taking away people's lands and destroying ranchers' lives. Now they also say that there's a possibility that they could shut off cell phone communication as well as set up a blockade on the one road that goes through that area. Now we do know that the sheriff does not want the presence of Bundy and the militia in the town, and many of the people that live in this area feel the same. Now, after we wrote the reports from The Guardian about the possible power being shut off and cell phone blockage, we went out there and were able to go and listen to some of the press conferences. Now, we had set up a meeting, a sit-down for myself and Ammon Bundy to really get to the bottom of why he thinks he should be doing this, what's led him to this situation, and what's the overall end game. And that was all canceled when he got intel that there was a massing a large amount of FBI agents and federal agents at this high school right here. This is the Burns High School, which is right in the heart of this small town. Now, what we see out here, as you can scan across and look, there are no large amounts of FBI vehicles waiting to strike the Bundy compound at the Wildlife Refuge. Now, this leads us to question. Based off this intel, Bundy came out and said that they will now be taking a defensive posture, that they will be getting ready. And while we were out there tonight, we saw them take government vehicles, huge tractors, bulldozers, and begin to barricade themselves into that compound in response to a possible FBI raid that they got intel on. Now, from what you see, there's nothing out here. Now, did the Bundys purposely get bad intel so they would make a move like that and come off looking ridiculous? Or maybe the FBI is inside and we just can't see. Okay, Gary Hunt's calling. Hold on. Did you give him that key? Or yes, sir. To give it to him, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Gary. Yeah, listen, uh, listen to me. Okay, this is what I got. I go to my YouTube, uh, go to my YouTube live page, and I just broadcast. I contact. And he gave me information, all right? And, and I have it on my YouTube channel, okay? Just go to go, go to YouTube, search for Pete Santilli, and then you'll see the live one. What's that? Make what thing work? Okay, go go to the one that says important uh, Am and uh, Bundy update. Pardon me. 
Do you do you see the important Am and Buddy update? No, go to go to YouTube. I'm at YouTube and he's at Billy Live. Now go go uh, in YouTube, search for um, uh, search for Pete. Yeah, I think it's Pete Santilli Live. It's uh, it's it's actually YouTube. It's Peter Santilli TV in the URL. You guys have any cigarettes, Pete? Now we have the camera pointed, pointed toward the television. Hang on, Pete will be right back with them. What's that? He's got it. Okay, Gary. Yeah. We're going to head out. Get your stuff. You have your coats and all that stuff. You ready to go now? Pretty much. I just want you to make sure that um, you have warm clothing. Have you seen that banner? I have not. I've stayed away from the uh, FBI command centers because uh, I don't want anyone to think I'm an FBI informant. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I have not. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only thing I did was I went over to the sheriff's department to uh, to talk to the sheriff. I haven't even greeted him since I've been here, but he uh, he wouldn't meet me. And have you seen a buildup of FBI agents or just? The, the have not. I've been mainly you know focused on speaking with the the sheriffs here locally, especially. Uh, we need to go though. Okay. We gotta go. Hey Gary. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna take you with me here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need you to get in the vehicle, Deb. I am. Okay. And you, you can probably just uh, log on to, you know, with the computer. I will. In the seat. Let me put this to sleep. Let's just make sure. Ready to go? You're going to take care of the animals, right? Yes, ma'am. What's that? I said I'm ready to take me with you. Yeah, I'm taking you. We tried to get everybody Stay here. Stay right there. Do uh, you have your recorder on? We try to get everybody Gary? here. It would have been so much more different than this. So I can give you updates as I get them. Where's your shoes? Well, we don't know at this point in time, but what we do know, the Bundys are bunkered in, the militia are ready. Now, as you can see, it's snowing pretty hard. There's a lot of snow on the ground, so I don't foresee any type of helicopter raid coming in. And it was a hell of a drive to get out here myself from the compound to here to see if there was any FBI in this area. Now, this leads me to question, who is giving the Bundys, Ammon Bundy, intel? And are they giving them good intel? Because as you can see, I see no federal agents out here whatsoever. And the Bundys also have been told, I'm not sure if this is... Uh, something that is true or not, but they've also been given intel, they say, that there are five warrants out for their arrest. One of the guys even took that so seriously as to walk outside of the compound, sit down in a chair with his rifle, take some uh, sleeping bags, and he said he was going to sit up there and hold his ground until they come out and arrest him. These guys do not want to fire first. They do not want a civil war. They do not want any type of action that could lead to the deaths of people. They care about their militia men. They care about the people in this county. They care about the cause. So they said they will not make a move unless the FBI makes a move. And they will do that in response, only as self-defense. So hopefully, cooler heads will prevail here in Oregon. Once again, I'm Joe Biggs reporting from the Burns High School for Infowars.com. Could you define for us what this means to you personally? Uh, to me, it's about my children being able to grow up in a free country. We're going back live.
live to Princeton, Oregon now to national MSNBC reporter Tony DeCopel. He is there with that man who is guarding the uh, insurgents camp there. And under that brown blanket is a rifle. I think you can see the rifle butt uh, coming out of the blanket. Tony, what's the situation there now? Lawrence, I'm here with Lavoie Finnegan. He's a 55-year-old uh, rancher from Arizona, father of 11, uh, and he says he believes there's a warrant out for his arrest, and he does not uh, anticipate respecting that warrant. He's got a gun here under the blanket, and Lavoie, why don't you tell us uh, what your plan is? Um, well, let's, first of all, let, let's, let's get a little bit of things um, out here in front. The information may or may not be accurate, but it appeared to be be highly credible that five warrants were issued for our arrest for for me for Am and Bundy for Ryan Bundy and I'm not sure for the other two and for, by the FBI a uh, federal warrants and so so if that is true if that is the case I do not want the the FBI federal agents have to go running around in the dark kicking in doors looking for me okay I want them to know exactly where I'm at so if they come here with a, an arrest warrant and they try to put cuffs on you, what's your plan? Well, they're, they're not going to just come up with a guy holding a rifle and put cuffs on him, okay? They, they're, they're not going to do that. What do you think they're going to do, and what are you prepared to do? Well, I hope that they go home. That's what I hope they do. Let's presume that they're not. Let's presume that if there's not already a warrant out for your arrest, you are breaking the law occupying this federal property. So perhaps at some point there will certainly be a warrant. When that warrant comes down, when that arrest comes, what do you tend to do in response? I have been raised in the country all my life. I love dearly to feel the wind on my face, to see the sunrise, to, to see the moon in the night. I have no intention of spending any of my days in a concrete box. And so I will, whatever days, and I believe that there'll be many, and. Uh, and hopefully prosperous days to come, but I will spend them riding my horses, trying to take care of my cows, and that's what I will do. Um, but I will not spend it in a box. So to avoid getting in that box, you're ready to do what? You guys have so many hypotheticals. <laughs> if they come here and try to arrest you, they yes. point a gun at you, they try to put cuffs on you, how far are you willing to take this? Well, don't point a gun at me. You don't point a gun at somebody unless you're going to shoot them. That, that's the first thing your thought is, yeah, don't point guns at people. And so I'm telling them right now, don't point guns at me. So you're prepared to die, better dead than in a cell? Are, are Absolutely. You, Dude, would you like to be in a cell? Nobody wants to live their, live their life in a cell. Absolutely, I'm not going to live my life in a cell. And so you're out here prepared to die over what principle exactly? It's, it's, it's about our country. It's about federalism. It's about the government closest to the people governs best. And what has happened is the powers in the government have been, those powers have been brought back up into a centralized government. And so the counties and the states, those things that were dealt at county levels and state levels are now so regulated by the federal levels that uh, um, our freedoms and our ability to have contact with our representatives on a one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face basis is gone. It's gone. I have sat down with my county sheriff face to face. I have sat down with my county commissioner face to face. And, you know, John McCain, he's not going to sit down with me face to face. And if he does, he'll promise me lots of things, but, but uh, he won't be able to change anything. That, that doesn't happen. Let the states manage and govern the things that pertain to the state. Let the counties manage and govern the things pertaining to the counties. And let the federal government go back to managing and pertaining to protecting our borders and defending our nation. That's what they need to do. Keep commerce regular and a, a few narrowly other defined things that the Constitution lays down. Let, let's just go back to, to that. I believe there, in government, okay? There, there's a man over our... Uh, yeah. I guess this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is it. 99 red. Stay right there, okay? Have you heard from uh, anyone?
Oh, that's okay. Oh, okay. Hey, did she go out? Uh, what's that? I have not. I haven't seen anything. We'll go out going out into town right now. You ready? Oh. What's that? Yes, yes, yes. Hey Deb. You ready? No, hold on a second, Gary. Yeah, Gary, I think uh yeah. I think we may get an update tonight, unfortunately. I'm so, you know, Gary, to be honest with you, you your, dude, I'm, I'm so, so deeply concerned, yes. And Benny has a backup, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Do you have a backup, Kate? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Gary, I'm so deeply concerned for these guys. Um, i gotta be, I got to be telling you, you know, the honest truth. I can't, you know, I can't hide my, uh, my emotions. How's it going? You want Joel game, man. I know. <laughs> really? Yeah, I gave mine to Kenny, the one I got to keep. Well, uh, I yeah, I actually, uh, you know, every, every day is a new day. We'll figure that out in the long run. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Long run. Yeah. Right. What's that? Sorry, you guys. There's blankets and pillows there, but... Go to the one that says Urgent Am and Bundy Update. Tell her to go to live events. Live now. Okay. Okay. I'm check it now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let me call Gary Hunt back. Okay, so for you people, so for everyone joining us, and if you're wondering what's happening here, we received a call about an hour ago from Am and Bundy telling us that he has solid intel that the um, police and the... Um, Where are they? Huh? And, and the FBI... Egan or whatever. Egan? Are uh, planning a raid. Or whatever. Planning to move on them. You know where the shell is? I think it's right across from the shell. Um, the shell? Yeah. The last thing he said to us was that... Yeah, that's not how you get there. Well, he told us That's the particulars. We huh? Before I get to that, um, no. he said that as far as he knows, his intel is telling him they are coming with five That's warrants. Five warrants. No, we got we got to go pick them up. Um, and then all they have to do is have a warrant. They're going to ride with us, or are they driving? No, they're going to have to drive. Yeah, they're driving. We okay. Unless you want to fit them in that one extra space. <laughs> no, no, no. They get the <laughs> there isn't any extra space. Okay, so they showed up. Uh, HBO Vice showed up at the perfect moment. Okay, so I'm giving them intel. Our our, um, our YouTube is filling up fast. I, I know there's got to be people here that's wondering what's going on, and it's moving so fast that you can't tell. All you new people that are in again, we got a call from Ammon. We are 30 miles away from um, the refuge uh, where we're sitting right now, so we're just now. You guys take you also know. I'm sorry to interrupt. Also know that. Um, that we need to keep this stream going, okay? Because, of course, we uh, we want to keep independent media alive and well. Okay, so we got five. Uh, we do got. Me a favor, Kenny. Yeah. yeah plug, yeah. plug this in. Okay, right Ammon here. said plug that, that he has solid intel. They are being raided, um, and that the that law okay. enforcement and the FBI are going to move on them with five warrants, okay? Now we know this for sure. If they move in with five warrants and they see other people there, um, those people, of course, are in jeopardy too. Listen, the last thing Ammon said to us before he hung up the phone was that he had to go because they needed to get ready. So uh, we are on our way out there. We're 30 miles away from there. We're gonna leave this stream hey, running Gary. so that you can yeah, see. Yeah, I'm here now. Hey, can you hear me? So you can see, what, Gary, we're live yeah. streaming and everyone else we're can hear you. We're live streaming and, yeah, everyone else can hear. Now, I'm out in town and we're proceeding safely. We're actually going to meet uh, the guys from HBO Vice. 
uh, because they want to uh, grab their cameras and we're gonna we're gonna head out there you know as safely as we can but uh, nothing out on the streets right now at all um, we're at Safeway there's nothing out in the Safeway parking lots I'm not gonna go over by the sheriff's office um, you know they got to do their thing and uh, we don't need to be you know actually we just need to proceed proceed safely to um, uh, to the refuge okay uh, traffic is uh, relatively quiet and we have some inclement weather here and you say uh, they're directly across from the um, it's up here on the left up here on the left America's best value okay so I'm gonna drive I'm gonna have to drive slowly uh, that's all there is to it okay The temperature is Gary, risen have, considerably here. Have you gotten here. any information at all? Nothing uh, from inside. No, everything I've gotten has been, uh, when I was eating dinner, CNN reported something about four warrants. And I've been out looking, and I can't find, uh, you know, the, the uh, what do they call it, the alert, uh, flash alert bin. They, there's no discussion of warrants on the CERN page. We checked PACER to see if uh, there was any uh, Bundy page. <coughs> I mean, we can't find any evidence of uh, or acknowledgement that there's any warrants. There's nothing available online at this point. Okay, I I'm also I, I, okay. I also spoke to uh, Ammon, and I asked him for the name of names of those if he knew of the names of those individuals, and he did not. So, and he said five. That's what he told us that there were five. Yeah, they had reported four, and the guy from Infowork said five. And uh, apparently, the wife had Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, we are here arriving at the... Uh, to pick up the guys from... Let's see. Which way do we go? Uh, you said meet them up front. Up front? Okay. Yeah. We're uh, picking up the guys from uh, HBO and Vice. These guys showed up. Perfect timing. And uh, and they want to, I guess they want to they want to go do uh, some sort of an embed uh, inside. So we're gonna go see if we can't set that up for them. So as information becomes available, Gary, I don't know if you're doing searches or anything like that, or you're relying upon my visual observations here. Well, I've got some people working on it, and I'm in touch with them on uh, you know Skype chat. Uh, and they're doing some research, seeing, uh, continuing to see if we can find anything. But let me give you a suggestion. The uh, uh, HBO people, uh, make sure you check their uh, ID cards and make sure they're old because the uh, fans that can look to plant uh, reporters to get inside. They what? They've been known to plant reporters, play reporters to get inside. They like go up to right. HBO and say, look, we want a guy to go in with your cameraman. So if you check their IDs and make sure they look old uh, rather than freshly issued, yep. their picture IDs. They always have a press card picture IDs. Okay. Hold on one second, okay? We're about to enter day five of a standoff in eastern Oregon, but federal officials say they're working on a plan to put a stop to it. This is Coin 6 News at 11 o'clock. I'm Jennifer Hoff. And I'm Jeff Gianola, and tonight the Harney County Sheriff says he's been assured by the FBI that at some point, those who seize control of the refuge will face charges. Tim Becker spoke with some militia members to get their reaction. Federal officials tell us they are developing a plan to end the standoff situation at the Malheur Wildlife Refuge. They say it'll start with negotiations, but they're not ruling out charging those that took the place over, then moving in to arrest them to resolve the situation. Resolve what? A bunch of people at a camp? We're camping out, we're hanging out. I shared law enforcement's stated intentions with some members of the armed group tonight as they stood watch at the entrance to the refuge. Their reaction? The FBI are terrorists. They're terrorists. So you don't think they'll negotiate? The FBI are bad guys. They're not good guys. 
You could see and you could feel the city, county, state, and federal police presence here all day long. In a way, it's intimidating people. Their central command post set up between the county courthouse and school district office, available because classes have been canceled all week as a safety precaution. Who's making these calls and why aren't the parents have a say so and such. Some people wonder why schools are closed when the standoff is happening 30 miles from town, where tonight this man, Lavoie Finnicum, that is the first thing that we'll do is to protect any rancher, any farmer, says he believes federal officials have already issued arrest warrants for five members of the group. There's not one sign here that says no trespassing. Not one. So as of right now, nobody has done a crime. You're here. Are you going to get trespassing? You're here doing a you're doing a cause. We're here doing a cause. Tell them to go after the real terrorists, not peaceful American citizens. Law enforcement officials tell us they're going to do everything they can to end the situation peacefully. But the unsettling nature of everything that is happening here has prompted the Harney County Sheriff to call a community meeting tomorrow to address the concerns of people that live here. That's going to happen at four o'clock. In Burns, Tim Becker, Coin Six News. We are now rolling, ladies and gentlemen, with HBO Vice. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say, hey, Gary Hunt. Yeah, I'm here. Gary Hunt, just to verify um, as well, for historical purposes, and also per your instructions, <coughs> everyone's credentials uh, credential. They all have credentials out. Okay. So they're safely displayed. Because, uh, and, and this is uh, the reason why I, uh, you know, we're concerned about this is because as we drive down the road, if there's any movements, right? Yeah. If there's they any look all, don't look fresh out of the, the laminator or anything. Pardon me? They don't look like they're fresh out of the laminator. They look like they've been... Uh, Used to bit. No, no, they're they're full blown credential. They, uh, one of the guys had NYPD. They're all they're all good. Yeah, these are these are the real deal, no doubt. Yeah, no, Cap, uh, Cap O'Shaughnessy uh, actually worked with this crew. He's done documentaries with them, so um, he invited them to come out to you know <coughs> to document. Hmm? What is that over there? Not sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we, as you see, we're proceeding um, down the road and we'll keep the stream on for, for a while, for as long as we can. It will drop off at some point when we get Yeah, the actually, the, when we went out there last time, we saw where the drop-off point is. Yeah. So. You'll, you'll stay with us pretty far into the trip. Now, uh, do we have any reporters at all streaming or broadcasting from out there? Great check. Excuse me? Uh, let me check. Gary, uh, this is really important to document, okay? I'm getting it. Yeah. No, no, uh, this, what I'm about to tell you is really important to document. I'm, I'm hoping they don't. Okay. We've made uh, every attempt. I say we. Uh, you know, I even wanted to, just because nobody was making any movement. I was absolutely shocked that the sheriff didn't show up out there. And uh, I wanted to show up, and, and you know, I, I had spoken to him, uh, you know, via email and stuff like that, and Kenny's met him, and I wanted to set up a, a meeting so that he could come out there, you know, and, and basically just have open open dialogue and communication, and, uh, and also introduce him to the international media. I thought it was a good opportunity uh, for him to make a good PR gesture, you know, to show uh, that he's resolving issues at the local level. So... Um, that was earlier. What? Nothing. Any comment on that? No. That was a good thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I would say if the feds are going to do something, they're probably going to have him stay away until they want him, him, the locals to come in and cover the backside. You know, away from the, the federal perimeter and then outside, that was the, uh, the Texas Rangers State Police and uh, McClellan County Sheriff's Department. Okay. For the exterior perimeter, so you have to go to the perimeter before you got huh? the test. What? 
Hey, hey, Gary, Gary, I'm going to yeah. have to drop off right now. You can go to the stream right now. Okay. Okay. We have to. It turns the heater off. So, sorry what about does? that. Huh? What does? Well, that's why I wanted to turn it off. And, yeah, I mean, if Gary can hear me, uh, we need to make sure that we have good heat in here. So, because it's going to get cold. But um, they, they are staged here. They have lights on. Uh, three we just passed, just, you know, sitting with lights on. And, and then uh, three in another spot that looked like they had a car pulled over with their lights on. So I don't know what that's about. I'm just going to tell you guys what we observe as we uh, start out here. Uh, we may not be able to get out of town, quite honestly. We'll see. If we can make it out there, uh, that'd be great. <laughs> 